Hi, this is Rufus Philpot. Welcome to MusicTrainer.com. Today I'm going to talk to you about the bass guitar. And something that seems to be missing from a lot of uh, instructional sites. It seems to be a, a really good introduction to the workings of the bass, how it's put together, and how to get a good sound out of the instrument. These days, there are hundreds of options in terms of different bass guitars, pickups, strings, body woods to choose from. I'm going to start off talking to you about some of the classic designs of the bass and the differences between the four string bass and the five string bass, which I brought along today as well, and also the fretless bass. In later lessons, we're going to look at these things in more detail. But for today, I'd like to give you just an overview of the bass so that if you're a beginner or a relative beginner, you really start to understand the instrument, how it's put together, and why it's put together the way it is. This is really important because as a bass player, sound is one of our primary contributions to a band. Sound and time, a good time feel. And if you're on a session and the sound of your bass is happening, you're already 50% there. So the bass I've got in my hands today, this is one of the earliest designs of bass guitars. Uh, this instrument was made in the mid-60s. And in fact, this design in its primary form came out in the 1950s. And then as it developed into the 1960s, we see that two pickups became quite often the norm. And you can see there's a, some controls here as well, which we're gonna talk about. So let's actually start to look at this bass in some more detail. So first of all, we can see this is a four string bass. Even today, the four string remains like the linchpin of the bass player's stable. Uh, a lot of producers really like to hear a four string. A lot of bass players believe the four string really has a, kind of like the best sound, certainly on the lower string, on the E string. And we're gonna talk about that more too in comparison. So let's look at how it's put together and the components that make up a bass guitar. So let's have a look at the individual components of a typical bass guitar. So working from the bottom of the bass, we can see this is what we call the bridge. This is where the strings attach to the bottom of the body of the instrument. This can be made of steel, brass, even aluminum. Brass remains pretty popular because it also had an added benefit of adding a little weight to the bottom section of the instrument. This also helps the instrument not to be neck heavy. And generally speaking, neck heavy instruments that tend to tilt towards the floor can make your life a little difficult because as you play, your hand is having to support the instrument. So if an instrument balances well, it's again something to look for when you're first trying out a bass. So here's the bridge. We can see within the bridge, we have saddles. These are called saddles, these individual sections here. And the string sits on the saddle. Now, bridge designs vary, but this is a fairly typical design. And you'll notice there are grooves in the saddle where the string actually sits. And it's important that the string kind of anchors here solidly so the strings don't move around and the spacing alters as you play. Moving further up, we have the pickups. Very important. These are effectively microphones and pick up the sound from the strings. Very important, we have two on this bass, and we'll look at the sound of those in a second. Next to these, we have what we call the control plate. On this bass, the control plate is on the top of the instrument. On some basses, the control plate is mounted from the rear, which I'll show you on another instrument. Now, on this particular bass, it's a classic design. We have a volume, volume, and a master tone control. And next to that, the input jack, where the guitar cable actually goes into the body of the bass. And obviously this takes the sound to your amplifier. Now, if we're to look at this, let's just get an understanding of the basic controls here. A lot of students of mine, and I've taught for almost 20 years now, it's surprising when they come to me for a lesson, a lot of people aren't really familiar with the controls on their instrument. And this sounds like such an obvious thing, but people really aren't always aware of that. And you should really get to know your bass, know the controls on it, know the sounds you can cull from the instrument. On a basic instrument like this, which is what we call passive, i.e. it has no battery powered circuitry in it. It's just all on board, no battery in here. The controls are relatively simple. In this case, we have volume for the front pickup, volume for the back pickup, and a tone control. Now, sometimes these pickups will be referred to as the bridge pickup. Now, as you know, this is the bridge. Obviously, the bridge pickup is closest to the bridge. And this pickup is referred to as the neck pickup because it's closest to the neck of the bass. Now, let's have a listen to how each pickup sounds. First of all, let's listen to just the back pickup, the bridge pickup. You can see it's got a kind of punchy, slightly mid-rangey tone. Now 
this isn't to the front pickup, just on its own. You can see it's got a little woofier, fatter sound, a little more old school perhaps. Now we can combine both pickups together. Have a listen to this. This is both pickups turned full on. You can see again, it's like a combination. You've still got that kind of old school fatness, but now a little more top end and zing to the sound. Now again, the tone control plays a lot of uh, importance in this. Let's check it out. So I'm still keeping both pickups full on. First of all, I'm going to have the tone control wound full open. So this gives you all the high end of the spectrum. There's an enormous difference when I open that all the way up. You can see you've got that little zing and click to the sound. You can really hear the noise of the strings on the metal frets here. Now if I wind this back, that top end decreases as I turn this control anti-clockwise. Check it out. Now I move it back, and then all the way back. It's a darker sound. And this is really important to understand you know, the, the importance of these controls individually and how they can shape your sound. And we're going to look at that more also as I play the five string bass later on too in the session. So these are your volume controls and your tone control. And whatever bass you have, it's very likely it will have some configuration that bears some resemblance to that volume controls, tone controls. And as we see on the five string bass, sometimes you'll have a battery powered circuit, which will give you even more control over your sound. Now let's move further up the bass. So let's look at the rest of the instrument. Obviously we've got the body here where all this stuff sits. And the body of a lot of basses is made of wood. Various types of wood, but wood is very popular still. In the 80s, um, manufacturers like Steinberger and Stator started using uh, carbon fiber or graphite for the necks of the instrument and even for the bodies. This meant very stable, strong basses that were often quite light in weight, were pretty impervious to uh, humidity and temperature changes. However, the downside of that can be that the instruments can sound a little sterile and not as woody, if you will. Whereas the actual wood of the instrument, although it's an electric instrument, the wood does play a part in the tone of the instrument. Old instruments like this were either made of alder or ash. This one is actually made of alder and it's really light, which I happen to really favor. I think light bases uh, are easier on your neck and shoulders and back. And also I think there's uh, something to be said for the resonance of the wood if it can vibrate freely. Then moving further up the bass, we have the neck of the instrument, very important component. Um, and you can see this neck is actually made of maple. This is pale wood here. This one's because it's a 40 year old instrument, it uh, is pretty warm. I myself like that because of the feel of the instrument. Now on the front, we have what we call the fingerboard. This is a, a thin strip of wood that is overlaid on the neck and glued in place. And this one is actually made of uh, Brazilian rosewood. You can see it's pretty dark. And then here we have the frets, the metal frets, which run across the fingerboard, you can see. These are often made of some sort of nickel or steel. And then the dots here are position markers along the fingerboard, just to help you know where you are, because it's a pretty long neck on a bass guitar. And you'll also notice there are side dots on the bass too. And these correspond with the front dots. Now you will see some basses that, that don't have any dots at all on the front, although more often than not, they will have side markers. Now, this is just a personal preference. Um, some of the bases I've owned have no dots on the front. If you know the, wet, the neck pretty well, you'll actually find uh, it's not a problem because you've still got the side markers. But again, if you're starting out on the base, I'd recommend you know these markers do help you know where you are on the neck, so don't shy away from that. And then we move to the top of the base neck, and there's a little strip of plastic. This is called the nut. And in the same way as the bridge holds the strings in place down here, the nut is responsible for this end of the base to keep the strings together here. Now this can be made of bone, plastic, graphite, or brass. None is necessarily better than the other, they're just slightly different tonally. Plastic is very common nowadays. And then this is called the headstock. And, and you'll notice the strings attach here onto these string posts here. Notice also there's some small stuff. We're gonna talk about how to string the bass properly in different types of strings in a later segment. But just to show you, notice how the strings, the winding goes to the bottom of the post and then the extra winding on the top. This allows the strings to have good pressure on the string posts, good pressure down on the nut. You'll notice this little disc here, this is called a string tree. If you're stringing your bass, make sure the strings go under the string tree. This again maintains good pressure on the nut, meaning the string has good even response and it's fastened securely here. And then these four items here, we call tuning pegs or machine heads. These are responsible for tuning the instrument. As you turn these 
One way, the string will go sharper, or the other way, flatter. And you'll notice these are actually quite large on this bass because it's an old design. You can see the, the tuning gears on the back here as well. On more modern basses, these have been minimized in, sa in size, and also the uh, tuning peg is much smaller too nowadays. The reason for that is so that the headstock doesn't feel too heavy in the hand. So you'll notice that if you buy a new bass, the tuning pegs may well look different, but they perform the same basic function. So that's a quick overview of the bass. So now you have some idea of how it's put together and what to look for in an instrument. And this was a four string bass. So now let's move on to looking at a five string bass, which uh, in today's um, music scene is very popular because it can reach a, a much lower register than a standard four string bass. And the one we're gonna look at has also some newer features too, which takes this bass into the 21st century.